can you interpret a term in a constitution which says constituent assembly as the legislative assembly? I don't understand, Madhu. Under what? Uh, what happens then if there is no constituent assembly? I'm sorry, Madhu. What happens if there is no constituent assembly? Do you have to create a constituent assembly afresh? Madhu, that is precisely between you want to do. You must understand the historical context in which this happened. This has not happened in an isolated fashion. Malach, what's your next How do we then what Malach, constitutional no mechanism would be in this phase then? If there were no constituent assembly and your lordships were sitting in five, I would have answered that question. But luckily we have a constituent assembly. Malach, I, I can't answer a hypothetical question as to what would how would you then how would you then put it you no pro, no constitutional procedure no. can be initiated for abrogation no. of Article no. 370 no. at all? I've been saying it's permanent. Why do you Malach, I've been no, saying argument is that after Pay with public notification, declare the article will cease to be operative or shall be operative only with such exception modifications from such date as it may specify. Yes, the provisor puts, an off, puts a precondition to it. No, it's a flexibility at the instance of the constituent assembly, not at the instance of parliament. Surely, Malat. But then when we are reading the term constituent assembly for the purpose of the provisor, at that time, when it was enacted, it was in 1949. But they contemplated it, Malas. They contemplated it. Why would they add the word constituent assembly in 370 when it was because not? Because at that time, we didn't have any legislative assembly for the state of uh, JNK. No, no, correct. But you had the orders. Well, I don't understand. The flexibility at the instance of the constituent assembly, but this power is given to the constituent assembly, not to the legislature. It not, it's not flexibility at the hands of parliament or the legislature because 147 says there's no flexibility there at all. So there are two parts to it. First is whether the parliament could have done it. That's a separate argument. But when we interpret the term constituted assembly for the purpose of the proviso to clause 3, can we by implication, because at the time when the, the constitution was enacted, at that time, we, there was no legislative assembly for the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Is that factually correct? Answer yes. is yes. Yes, of course. So then, when we interpret the term over here, can we interpret it to include the legislative assembly? But what is, how can you interpret a term in a constitution which says constituent assembly as the legislative assembly? I don't understand. Mother. Under what concept of interpretation of the constitution will you do that? There is no implied power. There is no express power. I mean, you can change any definition of any any we are not, we are constitution. Not, that that may not be. That will be it. Look, the term constituent assembly when it is used in the proviso to clause three at that time. Those. At that time, there was no legislative assembly. For the in purpose case. of framing the constitution that the constituent assembly is formed. That's not Malad, Nothing to do with the legislature. Which is why Malad Segeshwaran Bharti. See the explanation which has been enacted was afterwards, is sometimes in 1952. The explanation acted and uh, has been made part of part one, uh, clause one, was probably in 1952, if I'm not mistaken. It was there, Malat. No, initially there. It was amended later on. Amended That's later. not, it was there, but it, it was amended. there, it was amended yes, later. Yes, yes. Because at that time, then the, the legislative assembly was brought in. Council of Ministers was brought in. Because at that time there was the no council. Governor Malas was had to be. There was no council of ministers at that time. That was the Maharaja Malas. That's what, but that issue doesn't arise here. We're talking about Malas, a constituent assembly, the power of the constituent assembly, and you have now there are now the Keshavan Bharti Malas, uh, un, un, fortunately and unfortunately, sets up the law. Mr. Uh, Sibyl, <coughs> just as a because we are not looking at it from that perspective yesterday. Where was the first reference to the Constituent Assembly? Of course, the Constituent Assembly of the state finds a reference in the Constitution itself in Article 372, yes. 370 bracket 2. Uh, where is the first reference to the Constituent Assembly in the documents which you read out to us yesterday prior to the Indian Constitution? I find that in the proclamation of the Maharaja. Well, they are in the Constitution debates, Mother. I find that there's also a reference in the proclamation of the Maharaja, which we read out yesterday. I, the reason I'm asking you is this. Probably there, yes. The, sorry? Saran Singh's proclamation, I think. Yes. Uh -huh. 
See, the, I already mentioned that in the constituent assembly debates. I younger Malad's your office will remember. Yes. I quoted Malad's uh, sentence. Yes, volume uh, 8. All there, Malad's. Yes. Page 117. Yeah, Mr. Gopal Swami, I am Gar. No, you know, because when the Maharaja made the proclamation, when the Maharaja issued his proclamation on 3rd of March 1948. It was contemplated by the constitution and the constitution makers that there would be a constituent assembly which would come into place, which, the, which, which, which happened in 1951. Right. That's what happened. What happened first was when the Maharaja made his proclamation in 1948, he spoke of a national assembly. Yes, absolutely. Right? He says, my council of ministers shall take appropriate steps as soon as restoration of normal conditions have been completed to convene a national assembly based upon adult suffrage. Then five, the constitution to be framed by the national assembly yes. shall provide adequate safeguards for the minorities and contain, and contain appropriate provisions guaranteeing for the freedom of conscience. Right. Now, what appears to have happened was that before elections were held, they by adult suffrage, they, uh, they, they, com they composed of the, they composed the Constituent Assembly. That's how the Constituent Assembly That's came right. into existence. Now, uh, your whole argument is, of course, that, you know, what is to be done by a Constituent Assembly cannot really be done by a Legislative Assembly, and therefore less so by the Central Government assuming the character of a Legislative right. Assembly under 356. That's the, uh, uh, what happens then if there is no Constituent Assembly? I'm sorry, Malad. What happens if there is no constituent assembly? Do you have to create a constituent assembly afresh? Well, that is precisely between 1948 consultations. Malad, your No, now what would happen? Suppose they keep aside the procedure which they followed. We're keeping that aside for a correct, moment. Correct. Uh, 373 postulates the constituent assembly has to give its right, recommendation right, right. On, on, on any proposal for abrogation. Right. Suppose the government were, the president were to move a proposal for abrogation. According to you, how would that be effectuated now, say in post-1957 India? So, Mother, let me answer that in, in two parts. Number one, what my Lord is putting to me is in 1948, they contemplated a national assembly. Right. But your Lordships must remember that those were uh, years between 1948 and 1950, especially in after 1947, after the instrument accession was signed, Mother after the instrument of accession was signed, those were transitional periods. And when the constitution came to be framed, there was a dialogue between, uh, between uh, the state of Jammu and Kashmir as it then stood through the Maharaja and uh, the government of India. And both of them decided that we will put this into the constitution, that is 370, use the term constituent assembly, and you will then set up a constituent assembly to frame the constitution and decide what you want to do. You must understand the historical context in which this happened. This has not happened in an isolated fashion. Malad, the Parliament of India, the, the Constituent Assembly in India, framed a constitution which included a provision for, for a Constituent Assembly of Jammu and Kashmir. Malad, surely that was not an isolated act. This happened in consultation and in agreement with the then Maharaja. And the JNK constitution contemplates that this legislative assembly will have no role in regards exactly. to the amendment of the provision exactly. of the constitution exactly. relating exactly. to exactly. Article 370. Otherwise, they would not put that phrase. That, uh, but then question. how would that, how, what, then what sort of the con next question is, supposing there was no constituent assembly. That's the next question. How do we, then what well, constitutional mechanism would be in this phase then? If there were no constituent assembly and your lordships were sitting in five, I would answer that question. But luckily, we have a constituent assembly. Well, I, I can't answer a hypothetical question as to what would How would you then? How would you then put into place the constitutional machinery? Because there has to be machinery. It can't be that, you know, because there is no constituent assembly, no, that because there is no constituent assembly, you cannot at all deliberate on a proposal for abrogation or modification of Article 370. Your Lordship is putting to me, supposing the Maharaja refused to have a constituent assembly. No, it take 2019. I'm sorry? Take 2019. Yes. When the constituent assembly has been convened, the constituent assembly has drafted the constitution. Yes. Therefore, its role has come to an end. There is no constituent assembly. Correct. 2019. The government wishes to, the government, the president, 
which is to modify Article 370. Yes. Now we've seen the process which they followed. Yes. What, according to you, would have been the constitutional process to? Uh, no constitutional to... process because the Constitution of Jammu and Kashmir said, in terms in 147, mm -hmm. that no such bill can be introduced in the legislature. Oh, by them. By them. I'm talking about no by them where the constitution as it applies to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, which is part of the uh, part of the law applicable in Jammu. So and Kashmir. according to you, no pro, no constitutional procedure no. can be initiated for abrogation of Article 370 at all. I've been saying it's permanent. Why do you mean that I've been? Your saying? argument is that after 1957, yes, the president still has to have any power under Article. So, 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 so yes, article that of Article. That was temporary between 1951 and 1957. Where do you get that power from? You see, the point is, mothers, at that time it was temporary because there was nothing in place. After 1957, sub-article 3 has become odious now. Yes, no, mother. It can happen as a political, it, as a political decision. The uh, Jammu and Kashmir government and the legislature of the state unanimously did what? And they merged. That's, uh, that's another issue altogether.